It's finally time to talk about one of the more exciting smartphone releases we've had recently. And it's interesting how a simple change that seems obvious can be so significant. But with the enlarging of a secondary screen, flip smartphones have gotten flipped on their heads. All right, let's see how far I can go without more flip or fold puns, but in any case, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is my Moto Razr Plus week one. Starting off with the disclosure that this video is sponsored by Motorola, who graciously wanted to partner up with me on my week one video for the Razer Plus, so that I could give my first big thoughts on the new smartphone. Specifically, my thoughts on this covered display, which is one of the phone's main calling cards. But I also wanted to let you all know that continued coverage on the Moto Razer Plus is still coming, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you know when new videos on this smartphone come out. As a general smartphone, the Moto Razr Plus performs basically how you would expect. As the phone is opened up, you have plenty of screen with that P OLED display, and everything is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. But the general smartphone experience is pretty much what you would expect. Good performance and very usable on the daily. Which brings us to the covered display, which is one that provides more capabilities than we've ever seen so far on a flip smartphone. After spending all of this time with it, I thought of three key scenarios where it probably makes the most sense. First off, the little screen is like a secondary monitor on a computer, one that helps to expand the capabilities of the general smartphone. Next, we probably have my favorite use case, as the cover screen is a great viewfinder for the rear cameras. And finally, there is the scenario where the cover display can be used all on its own for the same experiences that you would use the main smartphone for. Let's start off with expandability. At first glance, the home screen seem like beefed up versions of widgets. And for the most part, that's exactly what you're getting. A bigger version of things like the always on clock display, which you can have open up just by tapping on the display and then swiping up from here or using the fingerprint reader embedded in the power button allows you to get to the miniaturized home screens. But this is where I already fell in love with the cover display because it's yet another canvas to personalize the phone. Just set any of your various pictures to the wallpaper and you can even turn off the various shortcuts that get you straight to the various panels and you have another canvas to really express yourself or to at least show off one of your current interests. The best part is that it takes up almost the entire surface area. I almost wish that this screen was on all the time, but uh, that's probably not as practical. What could be even more practical is uh, having more customization possibilities for the clock display. But you know what, the home screen wallpaper is already a great place to show off, even if you gotta turn it on yourself. But then it's on the home screens that you get all of the action. On the bottom here are your notifications and tapping on this little dock brings up and closes the shade. After that, you can swipe down from the top to get to the same types of settings you would see in the full interface, which makes it a very easy place to just toggle key aspects of the phone without having to open it up. And finally, the home screens themselves. We'll get to this apps page in just a little bit. Just like with most flip smartphones with a big enough display, there are panels that provide a level of functionality that do make sense for just quick use. You have things like a calendar agenda, you have the weather, speed dial uh, for your quick contacts. Uh, you even get Spotify controls all the way at the end, even though I'm not really a Spotify user. And you can even take a look at your current stats uh, in the Google Fit, let's say, widget here on this home screen. Really, with just these panels, it's here that most flip smartphone cover screens feel like a smartwatch was just tacked onto the top. But when the screen is this big, there are obviously bigger possibilities. Personally, I find myself just looking at a few things from these panels from time to time, especially since one of the panels is basically an adapted version of the Google News widget. And as far as this games page is concerned, um, I haven't actually dived into many of these games, but it's nice that they are there. And I know some of my colleagues have really gotten into stack bounce in particular. Uh, honestly, the games that I tend to want to play are way more satisfying on the larger screen anyway. But again, we'll get to how they look on this cover screen in the full app experience in a little bit. But before we move on, why don't we have a quick breather in this tea break? Now, it's going to be via this tea break that I'll tease the full app experience that I'm talking about on the covered display as we use a quick timer. And today will be the first time I make some tea for you guys in the traditional Chinese Gong Fu style. By using this, you do something called a rinse brew. Basically, you throw the tea leaves in and then the hot water, but it's within 30 seconds that you actually throw that water out because all it's meant to do is rinse the leaves and make them open up. From there, you throw in fresh hot water for around a minute or so. Quite literally, it's rinse and repeat. I'm drinking an oolong today, but it's actually called a spicy oolong because there are literally bits of Thai chilies in here. Don't worry, the tea's not actually spicy, like, at all. And using this method, you could actually get more flavor from the teas because the steeping time and the amount of water used at a time is less, or more concentrated, if you will. 
And the process is fairly involved, which means you have to be pretty mindful of what's going on as you're doing it. After all, this time you're not just turning on a timer for like four or five minutes and then walking away. In this style of making tea, it's literally a process or a ritual. And that's the reminder that I'll give you during this tea break. It's easy to view rituals and habits as automatic, but in reality, we have those moments every day because we're honed in at those times doing that particular task. Making coffee or tea in the morning like this, working out, even eating. All of these things can be times to just give our brains a moment to pause. And that's what being mindful is all about. Fully experiencing what is right in front of us and giving it all of our attention, all of our mind, so that it gives our otherwise hectic and cluttered brains a moment to basically breathe. So let me know first off what's going on everybody and then tell me in what ways you make sure to be mindful in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this moment to breathe because I'm sure there are a ton of videos coming out right now on the Moto Razor Plus and I'm just glad that you came to watch mine. I hope you come for the tech but you stay for the tea. So with that let's get back to the video. You probably saw on the bottom through the tea break that many of the shots were from the Razer Plus. And while the raw specs of the cameras aren't, let's say, exceptional, they are by no means slouches. I mean, I do have to give Moto some credit for putting a front-facing camera on here in the bigger display that can actually shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second. That's not something that you can even say about a lot of regular phones. Meanwhile, the rear cameras are a 12 megapixel main and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. Obviously, zoom won't really be a priority for the Razer Plus, but then again, it is is kind of hard to get a telescopic lens on a foam body that has to be this slim and uh, folds down to a manageable size. But what makes the flip smartphone camera experience so unique is the cover display, both because it serves as the viewfinder for the main cameras, but it can also flex to as many angles as you need for easy viewing and for easy framing of a shot. The phone itself becomes its own tripod in many scenarios. And after two weeks with the phone, I've actually taken the Moto Razr Plus to a few key places and used these capabilities. Places like a ball game and the Twice concert, where I was definitely using the covered display to get a quick selfie video rocking out to set me free. By the way, at a stadium where you can't actually bring a bag to carry stuff, I was really happy to have a phone that pairs down to a smaller size in my pocket. I already knew I was going to like this part of the Razr Plus. It's not just the amount of viewfinder that's available, but the amount of settings that are now there. Every essential setting is easy to access from the resolution right there, and you can hit 4K, uh, to even the aspect ratio. So you can just do a square when you're using the cover display or go for that 9x16 for vertical video like for social media. And when you're throwing up the cover display for a quick selfie, it's as simple as Moto's twist gesture, which is one of many that are still very useful on here, and then just hitting that volume button to trigger the shutter. Three second timer. And then for group photos or just setting down the video to frame yourself up, you still have the open hand palm gesture, which comes in handy so I don't have to hit a timer and then run to the spot. And I'm just really glad in general that 4K video is possible across all of the cameras, as the Moto Razr Plus has actually come in handy for me to get some social media work done lately. And here's one for you Instagram boyfriends and girlfriends out there. A secondary viewfinder like this could actually be a lifesaver because, well, it was for me when taking pictures of some friends at a recent event. The cover screen preview lets some picky subjects get a good look at the picture and make sure that it was to their liking as I took it. One other thing you can do is set the cover display to show a fun cartoon to get some smiles out of whoever but the picky ones want to know their framing. I'm still planning on doing a real-world camera test with the Moto Razr Plus soon, so let me know your thoughts on the photos and videos you've seen so far in the comments below. The bottom line is that a content creator like me wants a flip-out screen on a camera like this, so having the equivalent on a smartphone is obviously a win. And then finally, we have another scenario where I found myself using or trying to use the cover display the most as a full-on replacement for the main display. All right, so if you head over to the apps page here on the cover display home screens, you can see that there's a page of various apps that I have tried to use on this cover display. If you hit this uh, manage apps button, you can find a ton of the apps. Not literally every single one is listed on here, but a fair amount, most of them definitely are. So as long as the app is listed, it's with the Moto Razr Plus that you can actually run full apps on the outer display, making it so that maybe you don't even have to open the phone up. To say you would never have to open it up is a bit of an exaggeration, but for a moment, there, I did wonder if some of my main smartphone experiences could go that route. The short answer is that the cover display is not a full replacement, for a few different reasons, but it is a great way of quickly getting through some tasks with surprising ease. It's not a full replacement because some apps simply don't work well on there. Sure, you can open up some games like Marvel Snap and even Call of Duty Mobile, it's just that the cover display is a bit too cramped, and the more square aspect ratio is uh, providing a little less real estate than might be needed. 
Other apps like Instagram actually start off looking fairly okay, and you can expand the bottom portion by holding on the bottom navigation bar, so you can get a pretty good view of a lot of content on here. Uh, the thing is, if you head over to the camera area to actually get some shots done, you can see that the interface doesn't quite allow for a whole lot to happen. It shouldn't come as any surprise that the cover display can't literally do it all, uh, but thankfully when it doesn't, you can just open up the phone, and if you were stuck, you'll just open right up to a usable state. The reverse is true too, where any app that is used can be adapted to the cover display when the phone is closed. Just hit the continue button that shows up at the bottom. Uh, this has been useful primarily for YouTube in my case, where I actually find myself using the cover screen to watch videos comfortably at an angle. Technically speaking, it's the same way that you would watch things using flex mode on the inner screen, but the fact that I can do it on the cover display is just a refreshing little change. And it is the full YouTube app, albeit with a little bit more finicky navigation required. Holding on the bottom navigation bar, like I said before, expands and contracts the viewable area above and below the cameras, which helps sometimes. So no, it's not the full replacement that it could be, but I don't think it really had to be. Some experiences make more sense on here than others, and I think that's where the Moto Razr Plus needed to prove itself. Video viewing is one good example, like I've already shown, but then there are quicker scenarios like hitting the clock app to set an alarm or a timer, or turning on maps to have a smaller version of navigation available without having to open up the phone. In my case, as someone with type 2 diabetes, I have been able to use the cover display to quickly check my glucose levels. And I'm sure anyone can appreciate the quick method of responding to messages in apps like Telegram or swiping away emails in Gmail. It's actually pretty easy to type or swipe out messages on the cover display, but you do have to stick with the default key. Keyboard. And speaking of mindfulness, when I'm done with those short tasks, I find it easier to actually put the phone back down and get back to my conversation or what else, whatever else I'm doing. After all, if I open the phone up to do all of those same tasks, I'm also opening myself up to all of the possibilities that are available here and, of course, all of the distractions as well. After all, that's one of the points of having a flip smartphone, right? The fact that you can literally close it up and put it away. So it's in that way that I think the cover display is not a full replacement to the full phone, but it definitely bridges the gap, and it can be a replacement for the otherwise time-consuming versions of the full phone experience. And so there you have it, my first week with the Moto Razr Plus, focusing specifically on the ways that the cover display actually changed up the flip smartphone game. I do plan on doing more content on this phone because the capabilities of a larger outer display would mean updates might expand the phone's usage, so stay tuned for those videos. Once again, I want to thank Motorola for sponsoring this week one video, uh, and I hope that you got at least some insight into how the cover display really does make this a unique smartphone. But with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.